so the topic is basic principle of ultrasonic flaw detection the ultrasonic flaw detection is based on sound waves the word sonic is related to using of sound sound waves are categorized by their frequencies as subsonic sonic and ultrasonic subsonic frequencies are less than 20 hertz sonic frequencies which can be heard by human are from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and the frequencies which are more than 20 kilohertz are called ultrasonic frequencies sound waves are mechanical waves therefore sound wave need some medium to travel and the speed of sound wave will depend upon the medium whereas the frequency and wavelength of sound wave can be varied the other type of wave which we commonly encounter are electromagnetic waves example of electromagnetic waves are the signal we are getting for the cell phone etc sound waves can be classified as longitudinal or compression waves transverse or shear waves and surface waves the longitudinal waves are those wherein the particles of the material vibrate in the same direction as that of propagation of the wave sound energy is transmitted from one particle to another particle by alternating compression and hence these are also called compression waves these can these waves can travel through solid liquid and gas mediums longitudinal waves are the fastest of all the wave types this picture shows how a compression waves or the longitudinal waves travels in a medium in this the direction of travel of propagation of waves are shown in this way whereas the vibration of particles are shown in this manner because of the vibration of the particles say for example if this particle vibrate then this particle will move forth and back in this manner while the mean position of particle will remain as it is in this process this particle will transfer energy to the next particle and the next particle also starts vibrating in back and forth in a similar manner the previous particle and hence the energy is started and the hence the energy transfers from this particle to this particle and in this manner the energy is travels from one end or from the source of the wave to the receiver or the other end of the wave in this process we have seen that there are some zones like this where particles are comparatively sparsely placed and some zones which are like this where we can see particles are closely placed it has happened when the particles vibrates during the course of vibration of various particles they come closer or they spaced away now the wavelength of this particular wave can be defined between can be defined the length between the 
रेरिफिकेशन और रेरिफाइड एरिया और डेंसिफिकेशन और डेंसिफाइड एरिया सो हियर इट हैज बीन शोन एज बिटवीन टू डेंसिफाइड एरिया दैट वेव लेंथ इज शोन एज लेमडा लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द ट्रांसफर्स वेव ट्रांसफर्स वेव्स आर द वेव वेयर इन द वाइब्रेशन ऑफ पार्टिकल ऑफ द मटेरियल टेक्स प्लेस in the direction perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave the energy is transmitted from one particle to another particle by shear action and hence these waves are also known as shear waves these waves can travel only through solids and on the surface of liquid these waves cannot travel through liquid through liquid and gases as they do not have shear strength their velocity in any direction uh, their velocity in any given medium is approximately half of the velocity of the longitudinal wave this picture depicts propagation of transverse or shear wave here it can be seen that the direction of propagation of waves are shown in this way whereas the direction of vibration of particles are shown in this manner what we can see one particle will vibrate in this direction and the nearest particle will get sh shear action because of the movement of this particle and then this will also started vibrating in similar direction now as we have seen in case of longitudinal waves there may be some phases of rarefaction and densification and hence the space between the rarefied area and densified area can be defined as the wavelength in this case we can see because of the movement all the waves together vibrate in one direction may be upward direction as shown here as a crest or they may be vibrate in another direction that is shown as the trough so the wavelength is defined between the consecutive crest crest or the consecutive trough the wavelength of shear waves can be defined as the gap between the consecutive crest of the wave or consecutive trough of the wave as shown in this figure this is one of the summit this is another summit similarly this is one of the trough and this is another trough so wavelength is defined the gap between two consecutive summit or two consecutive troughs surface waves are confined to a very thin layer of material surface and are therefore not important from the point of view of rail flood detection therefore these waves are not being studied or given importance in ultrasonic flood detection of rails as we know the velocity of ultrasonic waves or velocity of sound waves are the property of the material or property of the medium in which they are traveling the velocity of the wave will depend upon whether it is longitudinal wave or it is a transverse wave because it will depend upon the different property of the material in case of steel the velocity of longitudinal waves is approximately 5900 meter per second whereas the velocity of transverse waves are 3230 meter per second in case of perpex this velocity of longitudinal waves are 2730 meter per second whereas transverse waves have 1430 meter per second in case of water longitudinal wave have velocity of 1480 meter per second whereas transverse wave cannot travel through water similarly the case of air the velocity of longitudinal waves are 330 meter per second now let us understand 
how the wave propagate and what are the various uh, elements behind it. The velocity of travel of wave, V depend upon the material through which the wave is propagating and V is given as the product of frequency and the amplitude. From this equation we can see higher the frequency and lower will be the wavelength because the velocity is constant. These are the various phenomena encountered when the wave propagates through a medium, reflection, refraction, transformation, the acoustic impedance of the waves and attenuation of the waves. Now let us talk about reflection and refraction of sound waves. Let's say the medium 1 and medium 2 is separated at the interface shown as a blue line. An incident wave is shown as a black, thick black line and a reflected and refracted uh, rays are shown with the black lines. Now let us see the a line perpendicular to the interface is shown also as a blue, blue line and the angle between the perpendicular to the surface and the incident wave is shown as I. Now the reflected wave will have the angle R. Sin I should be equal to sin R uh, that is due to Snell's law and the angle of refracted wave can be given as gamma. Now the Snell's law can be written as sin i divided by sin gamma is equal to velocity of wave in medium 1 that is v1 divided by v2. If we apply the same equation for the reflected waves, in that case v1 is equal to v2 and that implies sin i is equal to sin r. In this case gamma will be r, therefore i will be r, hence whatever has shown in the first that i equal to r will be correct. Now in case of reflected uh, refracted waves, the angle gamma will be different than the angle i because velocity in the two mediums are different. Here suppose the two mediums one is v1 is uh, shown as perpex and the other medium is shown as steel and the velocity is v2. Then the sin i divided by sin gamma is equal to v1 divided by v2. Now depending upon the uh, ratio of the speed sin i and sin gamma because sin i will be known, sin gamma can be obtained. Another phenomena is mode conversion. Mode conversion is a phenomena when a longitudinal wave hit an interface at an angle, some of the energy of longitudinal wave can cause particle to move in the transfer direction as well and then it will start what is known as shear wave. Mode conversion occurs only when a wave encounters an interface between material of different acoustic impedance and the incident angle is not normal. So two conditions we have to understand. Whereas the number one, the acoustic impedance of two waves should be different. And number two, the wave shall not hit normal to the plane of interface. Now let us see the previous example is uh, written again here medium 1, medium 2 is perfect and steel again an incident V, an incident uh, wave is assumed to be a longitudinal wave. It encounters or attacked uh, on the surface with angle I from the perpendicular to the surface. Now this wave because of the transformation this wave will be divided or it, it, this wave will be converted into two modes. One is transverse wave, another is longitudinal wave and both wave will be having different angle of refraction, a different angle of reflection. Now this again will be depending upon the sin i over sin r, in this case sin i divided by sin rl and sin i divided by sin r transverse. Now because incident wave is longitudinal wave, and reflected wave is longitudinal wave. So, 
R longitudinal will, will be equal to I, whereas R transverse will be different because we know the speed of transverse wave is approximately half of the speed of longitudinal wave in the same medium. Now, at the same time, the incident wave will be bifurcated or converted into two waves in case of refraction also and these two waves are represented here with the transverse and the longitudinal waves as well as. Now in this case the angle of uh, transverse wave is given as gamma t and longitudinal wave is given as gamma l. Now again if we write the Snell's law sin i is equal to sin i divided by sin gamma is equal to v divide, v1 divided by v2 the equation will take will take a slightly different look now here the speed of waves in perpex is given as v1 and that is equal to longitudinal wave is given as 2730 meter per second whereas transverse wave is given approximately 1430 meter per second similarly Longitudinal wave in a steel is traveling at 5900 meter per second and transverse wave is 3230 meter per second. Now let's take one example. In case of reflected wave both are longitudinal then sin i divided by sin r l where is the v l divided by v l 1 divided by v l 1 both the speed is same therefore it is a 1 and then sin i is equal to sin r l that is i is equal to r l. Now in case of transverse wave sin i divided by sin r t. Now here what is r t? That need to be find out whereas v l 1 is 2730 meter second and v t 1 is 1430 meter per second. Now we can find out a ratio between the i and r and accordingly trans, uh, angle of the reflected angle of the transverse wave can be find out. This can be calculated here. It can be written as sin i divided by sin r t and that is equal to v l1 is 2 7 3 0 divided by 1 4 3 0. So this value is greater than 1. So angle I will be greater than angle RT or I can say as compared to the longitudinal wave transverse wave will be closer to the perpendicular axis. <coughs> now in this case we can write the same Snell's law sin I divided by sin gamma l is equal to v l1 divided by v l2. Now here if I write the value of v l1 is 2730. This I can write is equal to 2730 divided by v l2 that is 5900. And this value I can say it is less than 1. So what I can say? Angle gamma L will be more than angle I. Okay. Now if I take another example. In this case V L1 is 2730 divided by V T2. That is the case of transverse wave. Here it is 3, 2, 3, 0. So in this case also is less than was and which implies that gamma t shall be greater than i. But if I remember the previous case, we can see the ratio of sin i over sin gamma will be smaller in, in case of longitudinal waves. Therefore, I can say the gamma longitudinal will be bigger than gamma transverse. Now there is one interesting phenomena that is known as total internal refraction. We take advantage of that and then eliminate out of two waves which are coming uh, which has been uh, 
appear when uh, incident wave is encountering in the previous case. Now, if I keep on increasing the incident angle, then the angle of a refraction that is gamma t and gamma i, gamma l. In this case, gamma l is larger than gamma t. Therefore, gamma l will be keep on increasing. And then there will be a condition when gamma l will become 90 degree. In that case, we can write sin i critical 1 divided by sin gamma l that is equal to v l 1 v longitudinal medium 2. Now, here we know gamma l, l is 90 degree. So, this will become sin i c 1 is equal to this divided by 1 is equal to v l 1 is around 3000, 2730 meter second and v l 2 is 5900 meter per second. Now, if we solve it, we will get the value of sin i c 1 and accordingly, I will get the value of i c 1 and the value of i c 1 is equal to 27.7 degree. And in this case, we can find out the value of gamma t also that will comes to be 33.3 degrees. That So, when the total internal refraction of longitudinal waves takes place, the angle of transverse wave in the medium is 33.3 degree or more. Now, let us increase the incidence angle beyond this limit then there will be a stage come when the transverse wave as well will become perpendicular or parallel to the medium interface. In that case, the angle can be calculated and this angle is arrived at, the incident angle is arrived at 57.7 degrees. Now, in this case, both longitudinal and transverse wave is subjected to total internal refraction and because of that, there will not be any wave which will be reflected to the surface from any of the surface inside the material. So, we have got the limit incident wave from 27.7 degrees to 57.7 degree. So, the first critical angle will be 27.7 degree and second critical angle can be set to 57.7 degrees. And this is the phenomena is used for testing by angular proofs because it will be very easy if we are trying to adjust only one wave. This thing can be represented in a, another manner. In this circle, we can see the incident waves are 27.7 degree to 57 degree approximately, whereas the reflected wave is 33.3 degree and above. Another property of interest is acoustic impedance. Acoustic impedance is a property of the material which determines its affinity for propagation of sound wave. The acoustic impedance, it is denoted as Z, of a material is defined as the product of density and the acoustic velocity of that material. So, Z is equal to P into V. Now, acoustic impedance of various materials are given. You can see from this table, the acoustic impedance of a Steel is maximum 4.68, whereas acoustic impedance of air is minimum that is 0 0.0004, so almost equal to 0. So, let us, let us try to remember the acoustic impedance of steel, machine oil, water, perpex, like that. Let us see how does it affect the working of USFD machine. Now, ultrasonic waves are reflected at boundaries when there is a difference in acoustic impedance z. Fractional amount of transmitted sound energy plus the fractional amount of reflected sound energy equals to 1. What does it mean? Total amount of energy is divided into partly reflected energy and partly refracted energy. Now, the greater is the impedance mismatch, the greater is the percentage of energy that will be reflected. This is given as 
the coefficient of reflection r is given as within bracket z2 minus z1 divided by z2 plus z1 that means the difference of acoustic impedance divided by summation of acoustic impedance and rest to the power 2 of this quotient when we find out this quotient this quotient is represented as the reflection coefficient now multiplying the reflection coefficient by 100 percent it will yield the amount of energy reflected as a percentage of original energy and 100 minus this value will be given the amount of energy that has been transmitted based on the various acoustic impedance for the two material reflected and refracted energies are given in case of steel to air contact the reflected energy will be 100 percent you can see z steel is very high compared to z air z air is almost equal to zero so Z steel minus 0 divided by Z steel plus 0 whole square is approximately 1. So, this value has become reflected energy will be 100 percent whereas refracted energy will be 0. Similarly, in case of water and steel, reflected energy is about 88 percent and refracted energy is about 12 percent and so on. Another phenomena is of importance is attenuation. When the sound wave travels through a medium, its intensity diminishes with distance. The combined effect of scattering and absorption is called attenuation. Scattering means the energy is uh, scattered or it has been distributed in all the direction so that the energy which is moving in the direction of the movement of the wave will be slightly less compared to the original energy and the absorption is the energy absorbed by the particles. So, some energy is already consumed as the wave is being produced, uh, uh, wave is uh, moving forward. So, here given as absorb absorption is energy consumed in the process of causing vibration of the particle of the matter and a scattering is the energy lost by dispersion of waves all over the material. Ultrasonic attenuation is therefore the rate of decay of the wave as it progress or propagate through the material. Attenuation is given as A equal to D cube and F raised to the power 4 divided by V raised to the power 4. It can be uh, rearranged and written as attenuation is equal to D raised to the power 4, D cube divided by lambda raised to the power 4. Whereas D is the average gain size of the material and lambda is the wavelength of the sound wave. Thus, we can say the loss of energy is more for a coarse material which is of course the weld compared to the rail and loss of energy is more for the smaller wavelengths or the wavelengths with large frequencies in a given medium. So, we can also understand the loss of energy will be more in case of ok let us look in a different manner if the frequency of the waves is kept same then because the speed of the transverse wave is smaller compared to longitudinal wave. Therefore, the loss of energy due to transverse wave will be more as compared to loss of energy due to longitudinal wave. Now, we are going to understand what are the various probes are used for USFD testing what are the various defects, their orientation and how these probes are useful to capture the defect in the rail and weld depending upon the orientation of the defect. Here in the picture, we are seeing the probe. Probe is an electroacoustic transducer. Function of the probe is to convert electrical signal into mechanical vibration through which it will transmit the ultrasonic wave into the medium and the same probe also used as a receiver while it will capture the echo from the defect reflected in the rails. In this picture, one crystal probe is shown here. Classification of probe. The probes can be classified as per the crystals. It can be single crystal or double crystal probe. In case of single crystal probe, 
the same crystal will be used to transmit as well as receive the ultrasonic waves and echo pulses therefore the mode is to be set in the machine as t plus r that is transmit and receiving in case of double crystal probe one crystal will be transmitter and other crystal will be receiver therefore the mode will be set as t minus r or t oblique r probe can also be classified with respect to the angle of the probe angle of the probe normal probe or zero degree probe for this probe Velocity will be set in the machine as 5920 meter per second for testing of rails and welds. We are using various angle probes. The angle is defined as the angle of the ultrasonic wave traveling in the medium with respect to the perpendicular surface of the interface. And these probes are sending the transverse wave. Therefore, the velocity will be set as 3230 meter per second. The probe can also be classified with respect to the frequency of the ultrasonic wave which it is sending in the medium. So it can be 2 or 2.5 megahertz probes and 4 megahertz probe. As we are aware that the speed of ultrasonic wave in a medium is constant and speed is given as V is equal to frequency of ultrasonic wave and the wavelength. We can notice here the longitudinal velocity is approximately double of the transverse wave velocity. So we are choosing the frequency in such a manner that the wavelength of the ultrasonic wave will remain constant. That is why we are having the 2 megahertz and 4 megahertz probe and we are using uh, selectively for the transverse and longitudinal waves. In this picture, a schematic diagram of normal probe is shown. In this, the normal probe is two crystal probe. Here, from this, ultrasonic waves are being sent in the medium. It will go, it will travel in the medium. Then from a reflector surface, it will reflect back and then it will again captured by the same probe. Accordingly, this probe will be having Two wires. A typical construction of probe is such that it will be having a piezoelectric crystal for receiving or sending the ultrasonic waves. This crystal, this probe will also have some of the dampening material so that this area all along is filled with the dampening material so that the vibration created by this piezoelectric crystal will not reflect back from the casing of the probe and the piezoelectric crystal is flushed and fitted with perpex material. So when the piezoelectric crystal vibrate, the perpex material will vibrate with the same frequency and it will send the ultrasonic wave in the material. On the other hand, when echo will be received by the probe, then that echo will vibrate the perpex material and in turn the probe will in turn the piezoelectric crystal will vibrate and hence the echo will be received. This principle is same for all type of probe. Now here in the another picture we are seeing the angle probe. As I told earlier this angle is defined as the angle of the probe. That means if I say it is a 70 degree probe then this angle will be 70 degree. It has been defined in such a manner. It will be easy for the machine operator to calculate the beam travel length and height uh, of the object, height of the crack or height of the defect from the rail top and whatever will be the longitudinal distance between the uh, defect and the position of the probe. This is a construct of double crystal probe. Here we can notice the Casing, dampening material, perfect sheet and the electrical lead. The probe, the piezoelectric crystal has been oriented in such a manner that it is able to send the ultrasonic wave in the medium and it will receive in the same angle so that it will almost acting like a vertical direction. So it is a simple construct or if it has been inclined. Now this is a construct of angle probe. In the angle probe, a wedge of perfect sheet has been kept in such a manner 
that it is able to maintain the probe angle in a perfect manner. Normally, angle probes are single crystal probe. This is a zero degree single crystal probe. This is used for checking the characteristics of the machine. The diameter of this crystal is 20 mm and it is shown as 2 megahertz probe here. These are the IIW block and the steel block of the size of 50 mm by 50 mm and of 60 mm height. These are used for setting the instrument for its uh, characteristics checking or characters checking for the probes. Whenever we are doing ultrasonic testing, we must use a couplant. In case of lab, initial setting and other testing, we are using a grease which is specified of 150 CST. Many times we are using thick oil also for coupling, typically for the well testing. However, grease is preferable. Most of the time, for through rail and well testing, we are using water as a coupling material. Water is used because it is abundantly available, it is cheap, but most importantly, the water will not make any mark on the rail top. If you use grease or oil, the rail top will become it will be lubricated and it may create problem for the hauling of the train. Therefore, water is used for the couplant medium. The reason for couplant is being used is at the interface of two dissimilar material, depending upon the acoustic impedance of the material, the ultrasonic wave will have affinity towards the material which is having higher acoustic impedance. Now, when ultrasonic waves are entering from say perspex sheets, it is having an acoustic impedance of 0.32 unit and it is first entering into the air which is having acoustic impedance of 0.0004. Therefore, the coefficient of reflectivity which is given as R is equal to Z2 minus Z1 divided by Z2 plus Z1 whole square, if we put the value, then we will get R is equal to 0 0.32 minus 0 0.0004 divided by 0 0.32 plus 0 0.0004 and raised to power 2. Now we can see the acoustic impedance of air that is 0 0.0004 is approximately equal to 0. So we can say the numerator and denominator is approximately same and accordingly we will get R is equal to 1. That means whatever incident wave is there it will entirely reflect and it will not transmit into the next medium that is air. And now we can take the amount of energy from water to steel. Amount of energy whatever is transmitting from water to steel. So here the coefficient of reflection we will take. That is equal to 4.68 minus 0 0.15 divided by 4.68 plus 0 0.15 whole to the power 2. This value will lead to approximately 88%. So what we can say, whenever there is a medium, when there is an interface between the steel and water, approximately 88% of energy will reflect back, only 12% energy will pass through. So in that case, as compared to air, some amount of energy will pass through which will able to help us to do ultrasonic testing of rails. Therefore, we must ensure a proper film of water must be available whenever we are doing ultrasonic testing. As per USFD manual, when we are putting the probe, we must check with the feeler gaze that the gap shall not be more than 0.2 mm. 
to ensure adequate thickness of water film we can see when a couplet we can see when a probe is placed then a thin layer of couplet will be in between the probe and water and this this will help us to couple the perpex and the steel with the help of a couplet layer of water in this picture we are seeing in a schematic manner that the amount of energy whatever is encountering at the interface of water and steel 88% of energy will reflect back only 12% of energy will go inside the steel and when in this slide we can notice that the percentage of energy reflected when there is a steel and perpex in contact is 76% and energy transmitted or reflected is 24% when there is a water and steel combination is there then 88% energy will be reflected back and 12% energy will be transmitted into the medium and we are going to use only these 12% energy therefore we must maintain proper coupling now a doubt may arise that whenever a water layer has been introduced in between the perpex and steel whether it will make any effect on the incident angle and the refracted angle if we go through by the snell's law if we go by the snell's law then this layer of water does not make any difference whether it is available or not because from the snell's law we can say sin incident angle divided by sin reflected angle that will be equal to the speed of ultrasonic wave in the first medium that is perspex divided by speed of ultrasonic wave in water similarly when the ultrasonic wave is traveling from water into steel the snell's law will be so at the interface of interface between water and steel the snell's law will be sin j divided by sin k is equal to vw divided by vs now if we multiply both left and right hand side then we will see that sin i divided by sin j multiplied by sin j divided by sin k equals to vp divided by vw multiplied by vw divided by vs here we notice that this sin j and this sin j will cancel this vw and vw will cancel the standard equation between the perpex and steel that is sin i divided by sin k equal to vp divided by v steel so there is no difference whether a couplet layer is in between or not now this is the weld testing machine in detail it will be discussed in later here we are just seeing what are the various equipments are being used for doing weld testing we are using 0 degree 2 megahertz probe 70 degree 2 megahertz probe 70 degree 2 megahertz side looking probe 45 degree 2 megahertz probe and 45 degree 2 megahertz single twistle probe these probes will be used to detect the various defects like 0 degree probe will be used for head and web 
all the horizontal defects 70 degree 2 megahertz probe will be used for the transverse defect in head and well foot 70 degree 2 megahertz side looking probe will be used for the half moon defect in the well foot 45 degree 2 megahertz probe will be used to detect half moon defect in the well foot and 45 degree 2 megahertz single crystal probe will be used to detect the lack of fusion in the web and the foot region. In this picture we are typically showing what are the various angles or what are the what are the various planes encountered for a three dimensional body. Here here this plane whatever is cutting across longitudinally the rail is known as the longitudinal plane. This plane which transversely cut this plane which cuts the rail head in a horizontal manner parallel to the ground and goes along the length of the rail. This is known as the horizontal plane and this plane which transversely cut the rail section in a vertical direction is known as transverse planes. Now, longitudinal plane, horizontal plane and transverse plane. So, these planes are essential to understand at the beginning because we have to orient our probes in such a manner that it will able to capture the defect oriented according to these planes. Because we know that ultrasonic wave will be reflected and captured by the probe only when it has encountered to a plane which is perpendicular to the direction of the travel of the ultrasonic wave. Now this picture we can see in this picture we can see that this is the defect line. And this defect line is originating from one bolt hole and crossing the entire weld and going and meeting with the another bolt hole. Typically, this defect is in the web and it is horizontal in nature and through the entire web thickness. So, this defect can be captured by 0 degree or normal probe. A typical 2 megahertz normal probe is shown in this picture. This type of defect which is in a transverse plane. This is the cross sectional and the plane whatever it the defect is, it is the transfer direction. So, this type of defect which is in the transverse plane can be captured by 70 degree single crystal pro for well testing. Here in this picture we are seeing 20 mm by 20 mm 2 megahertz probe. Now, this type of defect typically encounter in the weld. In this defect we can see there is some problem in the head region which is in a plane. There is some problem in the foot region which is again in a plane. So, this type of defect, this defect can be captured by 70 degree 2 megahertz single crystal probe and the defect which is in the web foot Many times we are calling it as half moon defect. This can be captured by 45 degree angular probe. And if as we have seen in the previous case, there was bolt hole very close to the well, then this half moon defect will fall in the shadow of bolt hole and it cannot be captured by 45 degree probe. Then we are using 70 degree side looking probe to capture these defects. In this picture we are typically seeing a 20 mm by 20 mm 2 megahertz 45 degree probe. In this picture we are seeing a 70 degree side looking 2 megahertz probe. This arrow indicates the orientation of the crystal so that it will be sending wave vertically from the uh, horizontal plane it will be sending at 45 degree but from the vertical angle also it is oriented in such a manner that it will direct towards the center of the 
well joined this crystal is oriented in 70 degree with respect to vertical plane and oriented in such a manner that it will send the ultrasonic wave towards the half moon defect this is the photograph of a standard test piece which is required for sensitivity setting of 80 volts how we are going to use all these things we will understand in the another video here we must understand that the standard test piece will have a 3 mm dia hole which has been shown here it will have 3 mm dia hole at the bottom for the 70 degree flange scanning it will have a half moon a uh, defect uh, for the sensitivity setting of 45 degree probe this is another test piece shown for the standard test piece for the flash butt welding joints flash butt welding joints is tested by 45 degree probe which are moved in tandem keeping at both side of the rail head so that any defect in this plane can be reflected and captured by the another probe or it will be captured by the receiver probe for flash butt weld testing we are using 45 degree probe for the head and 70 degree probe for the flange and the web region this is a typical crack available in the weld vent region and it is typically traveling across the rail section and orienting in mostly perpendicular direction this type of defect can be captured by tandem rig for this tandem rig we are using 45 degree angular probe this is a typical tandem rig set for the sensitivity setting and this is a tandem ring being used to capture the vertical planar defect in a weld this picture depicts the testing on the flange by using 70 degree side looking probe for capturing the half moon cracks this is a typical way of marking of defective weld for removal after usfd testing of a manual weld here you can say two cross marks are made on the rail head this will be done on both side of the rail head this is typical marking for the weld testing defects which are to be kept under observation a big red circle has been marked on both side of the rail head whenever defect has been found in this category now we are seeing this picture for the double rail tester and single rail tester in double rail tester we are having two banks comprising of seven probes on each bank this is testing both the rails simultaneously whereas the single rail tester will be having one set of seven probes and it will be used for testing of single rail whenever usfd testing is being done on a sharp curve point and crossing region wherever we have to frequently lift and readjust the probe bank or there are chances of slippage of the probe bank due to curvature this drt is not a good option in that case we must use the srt in case of through rail testing using srt or drt we are using seven probes these probes are one probe of 0 degree 4 megahertz probe that is used to find out or capture the defect in the head region web region and the foot region which are typically in horizontal in nature and it this particular probe can capture only 20 mm wide region from rail head to rail foot whereas 70 degree 2 megahertz probe is used for capturing the defects in the head region all sorts of transfer defects these 70 degree probes are used in three sets one for the central one set for the central region one set for the gauge face and another set for the field side and each set is having two probes one forward and one for backward because of the orientation of the because of the 70 degree angle only flaws which are favorably oriented to these uh, probes can be captured therefore we are using a set of forward and backward looking probe we will we will understand the purpose and uses of these probes when we are understanding or when we are looking for the testing procedures apart from that we are using 45 degree 2 megahertz probe that will be used in a test rig for checking the transverse defect at the location where rail is having a scab or wheel burns these are the typical defects noticed in the rail and that can be captured by the normal probe here we can see there is a horizontal crack and traveling through the rail head along its length 
here we are seeing a vertical split in the rail head and that is also traveling along the rail length another view of horizontal split is shown in this picture where a piece of rail head has been knocked off if you look from the side of the rail many times we are finding there are the horizontal all defects traveling along the rail head so all these type of defects can be captured by normal probe in case of this defect this defect or this defect we will not get any of the back echo or we will get the back echo at a very less distance from the rail head in case of vertical split of the head or web or any such reason we will get a diminished back echo and may be flaw echo or may not be flaw echo. these are another set of defects which can be captured it is again a vertical split of the rail head here also we can see the vertical split of the rail head here in this picture it is very clear this vertical split of the rail head is traveling along the length of the rail so these defects can be captured by the normal probe this is the web split this also can be captured by normal probe in case of vertical split we will not get sometimes we get the back echo sometimes we will not get the back echo or sometimes we get the flaw echo with a smaller amplitude in in such case we must use zero degree probe keeping at the side face of the rail head web to capture these type of flaws this is a typical star crack being observed at the bolt hole location this defect can also be captured using by zero degree probe here we can see a seam developing here we can see a seam is traveling throughout the rail head and web junction this type of defect can also be captured by normal probe this is a typical two crystal zero degree probe shown from the face of the probe these defects can be captured by normal probe but when the defect travels within the head region then these defects cannot be captured by normal probe and can be captured by 70 degree angular probe similarly this type of kidney defect formation all these type of defects can be captured by 70 degree angular probes these are the transverse in nature this a typical set of 70 degree probe having 2 megahertz crystal these are the a pair of two single crystal probes one is oriented towards the forward side another is oriented towards the backward side this is a arrangement for 45 degree test trick two 45 degree probes are kept and they will be used in conjunction this is a typical standard test piece for the rail testing here we are having 12 mm dia hole at 25 mm from the rail top used for central probe at the face of the at the inclined face of this test piece we are having this 5 mm flash bottom dia hole which is used for setting the sensitivity of gauge face or non gauge face 70 degree probe this is a typical arrangement how a 45 degree tandem probe will be used this is a typical arrangement how a 45 degree test rig will be used for checking the defect below a wheel burn or rail scrap now once a flaw is found in a rail or or the weld at the time of through testing then it will be marked by three red cross at the web of the rail in case of it is imr here it has been shown for imr w here it is for the defects in the rail it is designated as imr when an obs defect is noticed nearby a weld region then it will be marked as obs w and shown as a single cross on the rail web and if it is in the defect in the rail then it will be shown as a single cross in the rail web and it is designated as simple obs this is the area covered by a normal zero degree probe this is the area covered by a 70 degree central probe this is the area covered by a gauge face uh, 70 degree probe and it is combined with the non gauge face 70 degree probe then it is capturing the mostly the entire head region except 5 mm all round of the head and the foot region so when we are doing through rail testing we are capturing the entire rail except 5 mm periphery of the rail head and flanging portion of the rail foot 10 mm from center of the rail on each side in this picture we can see the area not covered by usfd 
even though usfd is a very potent method for finding out and taking care of the hidden defects in the rail yet it is having certain shortcomings or limitations due to which we need to understand the capability of usfd testing the equipment utilized incorporate facility only for a specific defect using usfd srt drt or the various probe it is aimed at capturing the specific defect each and every defect oriented at various angle cannot be captured by this in fact to detect the defect efficiently ultrasonic beam is to be directed towards the prop perpendicularly the defects may not be oriented favorably for the direction and hence it may not be captured a 4 mm deep layer from the rail table cannot be tested as it falls in the dead zone of the probe severe piping in the rail may give indication of flaw echo by 0 degree probe but in case of hairline or fine central shrinkage or pipe negligible drop occur in the bottom signal and the back wall echo will not differentiate from a good rail and the defective rail therefore this defect may remain unnoticed by usfd operator bolt hole cracks can best be detected by 37 degree probe which is now not being used in the current set of srt and drt machines now bolt hole defects are being detected by using zero degree probes and if these cracks are not favorably oriented then it may not be detected and if they are of very smaller size within the bolt hole region then many times they are also left out and not detected similarly if the cracks are propagating vertically downward or upward direction then it may not be possible to detect at the bolt hole location the ultrasonic probes used in the rail tester have a frequency of 4 megahertz for longitudinal wave and 2 megahertz for transverse wave therefore cracks lesser than 0.8 mm size cannot be detected by the present arrangement rails having rust pitting hogging battering of rail ends misalignment of joints scab wheel bonds and other surface imperfections restricted restrict proper acoustic coupling between the probe and the rail table and may not permit detection of flaws in such cases side probing is to be used whenever such defects are encountered loss of back wall echo or an alarm signal is obtained this indicates that the defect if any below these patches may remain undetected under such circumstances hand probing is to be done many times these unwanted feature on the rail head mask the defects and if somehow little bit contact is there then the beep or the alarm may not indicate and then there will be a problem for the usfd operator to distinguish or to capture these location therefore it is advisable the usfd operator shall invariably use side probing at these locations which which again will hamper the progress and output for the day and this need to be properly taken care of in case of testing of sej cms crossing point and tossing due to a specific shape near the nose it is very difficult to move the trolley for testing and achieving acoustic coupling so these areas typically remain a dark area for us therefore except the stock rail the balance portion is not amenable for the detection by usfd srt or drt for that hand probing need to be resorted to usfd trolley has been designed to operate under normal condition of gauge while testing on sharp curve gradient slack gauge etc the problem of proper coupling may arise in the event of dimensional variation in the gauge and also at sharp curve it is possible that the probe are not properly contacting the rail surface while testing with drt in such case testing by hand probing or by single rail tester may be resorted to